Let's go to Kerry and uh, hear a little bit about how the wake is going. Sean Bonner Sullivan is with us. Sean, good morning to you. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Shane. How are you, lads? We're okay. How are you, hon? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there, Jerry. Yeah, uh, Tuesday morning after an all-Ireland defeat, I've been there. Unfortunately, um, actually, you know, the Tuesday morning is probably the worst because yesterday you would have had the distraction of the the homecoming, and and um, you know, you would have you probably would have had a few beers Sunday night, ease the pain, and yesterday, and and then you wake up this morning. Probably, usually, we would have woke up in in, in Killarney somewhere. Um, and that's when it kind of hits you that uh, things just didn't go your way on Sunday. So um, I can feel now for the lads and the management this morning. But look, that's life. That's football. we got to move on. Um, but yes, Sunday will certainly be one that really, really, I think we live to regret. Um, but anyway, on we go. Uh, I was having a conversation with Sheen in the aftermath of the game and he said it felt like the Tyrone games, the Tyrone all finals. I, mm. I, I actually thought Tyrone were better teams on the day in those all Ireland's and so were kind of they merited their victory in a way this one I'm sure Kerry definitely feel like they kicked it away and that they were at least the equal if not actually better than Dublin and so and that's not a knock on Dublin all my Dublin mm. friends afterwards when I was when I was uh, putting this theory I was shut up shut up that's, that's nonsense <laughs> I was like um, I, you know, it's, it's actually when you think about it it's the hallmark of a truly great team to get over the, the line when you're not necessarily the best team in the game. And uh, anyway, what's your take on all that? Yeah, uh, no, the Tyrone games for me would be different too. I think we were just beaten on the day by a, a superior outfit. Um, this one is different. And again, absolutely 100% agree. It's no knock on Dublin. You know, they they showed us how to close out a game. That's, that's very simply it. And... Um, I think down here we would have felt that maybe we'd learned how to do that, particularly since Jack came back. Um, but I think he even alluded to himself yesterday. I think he was speaking to the media and that maybe we haven't learned how to do it. Um, and if this is another piece of education or another step in this team's process, then so be it a tough one to take. But look, if 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 that is the the outcome of this down the tracks, then then we'll we'll just grin and bear it. But. No, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling because we didn't do a whole pile wrong. Kerry didn't do a whole pile wrong. It's just Dublin did a few things better. Um, so what did Dublin do better? First of all, their kick out uh, on both sides. Um, they went after hours and cracked us on numerous occasions. We just couldn't get a handle on, on that man, Cluxton, and his relationship with Brian Howard. Did I see somewhere Howard won eight kickouts um, on, on on Sunday? That's 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 crazy. That's 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 unbelievable stuff to have that relationship between a goalie and a midfielder. How Kerry didn't get to grips with that sooner, I don't know. Second half was better. Second half was definitely better. And of course, Howard then did so much running. His his calf gave up on him, and he had to go off. He was outstanding. I thought he had a great year actually. Um, and was Dublin's go-to guy in a lot of the championship games when it came to their kick-out. So maybe Kerry just didn't, I won't say they didn't plan for it, but it's certainly something that maybe they look back at and, and, and realise that they were they were beaten in that sector. Um, and Dublin took their chances. Dublin took their chances. They were they worked their scores better and smarter down the stretch. And, uh, and we didn't. And we were forcing a little bit. David obviously had an off day even though he got into positions where you would have expected him to kick scores that he would usually kick. He just had an off day. Um, and all that milled together, especially going down into the last 10 minutes, caught us. Jack's point, I thought, was excellent in terms of, you know, if if you had if you had said to if you had said to the Kerry management when they were going to bed in their hotel Saturday night that Kerry would flip the third quarter, this famous third quarter that Dublin are renowned for. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to use the term in control of the game because I'm not sure either team were ever in control of that game on Sunday. But Kerry found themselves in a very, very good place when they were the three points up before the mistake, before Gavin White's mistake. Unfortunately for him, a great year he had as well. And it's just unfortunate for him that a mistake like that happens on the biggest day. But. I worried when that goal went in because I thought, here we go. Here's this oxygen that Dublin needed. Here's this oxygen the Hill needed. Uh, Kerry, our, could, this could this could explode here or implode, should I say. 
but I thought we reacted very well to go three up again. But I just think that the energy we expended getting back into that three-point lead cost us in the end, cost us going down into that last 10 minutes. And another flip side is when we needed legs then, uh, someone like a Stephen O'Brien, who we had started, um, wasn't there to come in off the bench to give us that energy. I know we brought in Adrian Splann. I know we brought in Michal Burns. But they are not those type of players. Killian Splann as well, who kicked a great score. They aren't those type of players to give you that those legs in the middle. Reno Big Lake came on maybe a little bit too late for me. I felt he might have been a guy who maybe should have came on when McCaffrey came on and go on McCaffrey to curb his influence. But look, these are all little things that you look at after. It's 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 when you're in the heat of it and in the middle of it that those decisions need to be made. Um, but look, at the end of the day, Dublin showed us how to close out a game and close it out brilliantly as they always do. Yeah, that's the difficulty is that you like when there's a period against a great team like Dublin and you do get into your three-point lead, you have to drown them because you know they're going to come back. Um, in terms of the kick-out, what, like, what could they do differently? Uh, let's, let's start with their own kick-out. What, what could Kerry do differently next time? Um, in terms of our own kick-out, I just felt that, uh, look, and, and, and again, it's easy to say because you, you just, you, you know, when you're out in the middle of it, you don't, the opposition are obviously coming with some tactic. I just think that we, we lacked that little bit of bravery. We lacked that little bit of movement, particularly out to the flanks. I mean, Shane Ryan had to go long down the middle quite often when Dublin put the press on. But I mean, if you're, if you're, if, if a team are pressing you, the last place you want that ball put up for grabs is, is, is out around the middle, where if it's broken back, which it was on numerous occasions by Dublin, you know, you're right down the centre of Kerry's defence there. And I, I felt there could have been a little bit more lateral running out to the flanks from midfield, even if mid, if halfbacks got out of there and created little pockets for our half forwards to come down into you know, little things like that. But again, it's 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 very easy to say that when it's the heat of an all-earned final. And, and I mean, you have to give kudos to Dublin. They really went after it. The other side, I felt Dublin used the cluster kick out quite a bit. I thought they, they used it an awful lot. And Kerry seemed to be going man to man in a cluster kick out, which is very, very difficult to do, Jar. Because if you're, if you're in a cluster kick out or a bunched kick out, and you're trying to find your men. There's movement in there by the Dublin players. They're all bunched together, but they're still moving, little intricate movements, and Kerry are all of a sudden trying to find, well, where's my man? And it's very, very difficult to communicate that in a split second. All of a sudden, a Howard, mainly, or someone else is broken out of the pack, out for a simple pop uh, to a pocket from Cluxton, and Dublin are on the move down the field, and Kerry are still looking around, maybe looking for their men. So I felt that maybe forming a a zone around the zone or a zone around the bunch might have been better for Kerry. They might have got to the the outlet of the kick out a bit quicker, which obviously, look, was Howard quite a bit. Not always him, but it was him quite a bit. So, look, again, these are things that Dublin or Kerry will learn from. Um, I know Darren was talking to, to Joe yesterday evening and made a good point that these are all things that the Kerry lads will look back at. Unfortunately, with the new system, they have quite a bit of time now to look back at this stuff. But... These are all little bits and pieces that they learn from Jar, and our age profile is good. We're young, Bar Bargaini, Paul Murphy, and Stephen O'Brien. We're all under the thirty mark, so it's it's an education for these young lads, a tough one to take, but it's a good education at the same time. Is the spread of scorers, Sean, uh, or lack of spread of scorers, a concern? I know Sean Kavanagh brought that uh, issue up. I think it was maybe five different scorers for Kerry. I think it maybe eight for Dublin, which doesn't seem like a big difference. But usually you have the likes of Gavin White and Tom O'Sullivan, Jim and O'Connor yeah. chipping in with a point or two, and that that just didn't happen at the weekend. No, great point, Shane. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was lying awake last night uh, thinking about that amongst other amongst other things, but it was just not enough. Not enough, and and it, and you see, this is the thing. Look, I've been in management rooms um, when you're thinking about starting a player or not starting a player or holding a player back or saying, "No, geez, you know he's fresh. Let's go with him." Stephen O'Brien is the case in point that I'm talking about. Like this, Stephen started because we're not getting the we're not getting the spread of scores, and and we would have hope, been hoping Stephen could have chipped in with a few from half forward. Stephen hadn't a bad game. I just want to make that very, very clear. He did not have a bad game. He got on plenty ball. He worked hard. Got a few turnovers in the first half in particular. But we just didn't get the scores again from those areas where we needed. And look, everyone was talking about David going into the game, that he was going to need help. 
I think we got one nine outside of David from Paul, from Paddy, from Shawnee. Um, but still not enough in an All Ireland final. We knew we knew that probably one fifteen, one sixteen, one seventeen was probably going to win the game. And we just didn't get there. We needed that as extra two, three, four points from somewhere else. I know Tom Sullivan had a shot late on. It was a tired kick. Mm. I can't even remember Damon O'Connor getting in for a scoring chance. Stephen himself, I don't think, got a shot off. Paul Ganey will look back and Paul played well. Um, but that first goal chance was, oh, that was crucial. That was crucial. If that hits the back of the net, that's a great start for Kerry. I know he did, he had a chance where he got inside um, Davy Byrne, was it, and, and clip one off the post, went wide. So look, all these things added up to, to, to things that we, we needed. But at the same time, Shane, you flip that around, and I know you say Dublin had eight different scorers, but Dublin missed chances too. Do you know what I mean? Paul Mannion, Con rattled the crossbar. He nearly broke the goals down in front of the hill. Um, Brian Howard had a poor attempt early, early doors off his left I've never seen him kick a shot off his left before you know the things fellas doing in All-Ireland final um, when the pressure's on so look we, we can talk all day about Kerry missing their chances but Dublin had their had, had their chances too so there's no excuses there and I was listening to you earlier on Ger, before I came on the, the tough thing about this is the Kerry defence played so well yeah. they played so so well um, turnovers tackling you know, putting the dubs under pressure. People talk about Fitzsimons and the great game he had, putting David under pressure. Not for all his kicks now, I have to say. I, I You know, I think maybe a lot of people are looking at that through, through maybe blue-tinted glasses. I mean, Fitzsimons had a great season. He had a great game. He curbed David's influence, but he wasn't on, on the, you know, he wasn't down at his foot for every kick. I know David will be, be disappointed with some of the shots. Um, his radar just wasn't in. But, you know, the Kerry players were really, really putting the dubs under pressure when they were kicking. So, you know, our defence, no problems. But uh, unfortunately, it was just the up, up the other side of the field. We, we just didn't put them to bed, you know. The point you make about the age profile is really well made. And there's been a lot of talk and part of it's gossip. Some of it's very well informed about how many dubs are going to step away. Is your understanding that the three lads you've mentioned will be around and available next year? Because it feels like if Kerry are going to get over the line, they're going to need everybody to have a role maybe not a starting role but certainly to be able to influence things set the tone in training be an impact sub do you think those three are going to stick around? I'd hope so Ger because I mean look look what got Dublin over the line do you know what I mean? You know that's that, that answers your question you know the guys that came back for Dublin are okay they went away and came back was experience and, and, and look I can only imagine what Cluxton McCaffrey Mannion brought to that whole Dublin setup outside of their playing um, capability, outside of their, their ability as footballers, what they brought to the dressing room. So if that Kerry team, because of their age profile, were to lose again a Paul Murphy, a Stephen O'Brien, two of them, all three of them, um, that's a real dent to the dressing room in terms of what they bring in in, in terms of, um, of, of experience. So I'd be hoping they stick around is there anything to say that they wouldn't? I thought Paul Murphy had an excellent game. Like he was very unlucky with the block on the goal. Early on, he got some great turnovers. He's still as fit as ever. He was one of the most consistent performers down here in county championship and club championship football last year. Can't see Paul walking away from it. Stephen O'Brien still has a lot to offer considering that he had really no football at all played this year with his injury. So depending on how the body is, I would expect him to stick around. I suppose Paul Ganey is the one. He's the oldest. Um, did he have a poor game on Sunday? No. Would he look back and say he should have put away a few other chances? Possibly. So is there unfinished business for him? I'd like to think so. So out of those three, I, I can see them stepping away and I would hope not um, because we need we need everybody. What we also need, though, Jar, is we need to go and find, and again, going back to Darren, I thought himself and Colin were excellent yesterday with Joe, we need a little bit more depth. Um, and it's the one thing that I, I was disappointed with, and I know a lot of people in Kerry would have been disappointed with this year, is that we just didn't find a little bit more depth for the bench. Um, I said it all year, Dublin had a strong, the strongest bench in the country. I think I was proved right. Um, how do Kerry go and find that? They are out there. Are they a bit young yet? I think so. I was I, I saw them up close and personal with the under-20s for two years. There's still a little bit of development to go on a lot of players. But I think we need to maybe look now at possibly throwing a few of them into the league at the start of next year because we just need to find a few fresh faces. We need legs. 
Um, but look, that's for Jack and the management to go, go and look at club and championship football now. It's starting next weekend, believe it or not. So that's uh, that's that's another story. Is the bench that that, that point has been made both in advance and in the wake of the match, Sean? That that you know, obviously Dublin's bench is so much stronger than Kerry's, and the strength and depth is a massive thing. But like, yeah, if you if you actually look at it, so Brian Bjorkia comes on possibly in some people's books could have even started ahead of Paul Murphy maybe in that game Adrian Spillane comes on Killian Spillane comes on and scores a lovely point um, Michal Burns I mean that block by Burns late on uh, if Kerry go on to win that game could have been a, a historic and famous All-Ireland final moment Like, and then of course Tony Brosnan's obviously unlucky to, to miss out through injury so is the depth that big a concern in Kerry? Uh, I, it is it is uh, Shane because all the players you mentioned there, um, okay, Big Lee obviously started on last year's team, so mm. so yeah, he made a, he you could make a case that he could possibly get in there, but n- none of those players um, have really, for me, um, had massive impacts when they're coming into games, mm. particularly from the scoring perspective. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that at the end of the day, from a forwards perspective, scoring perspective, and talking as an ex-forward, you have to be coming in making an impact on the scoreboard for me. And and it's it's something that's not... I think somebody sent me, look, <laughs> the post-mortems have been flying, obviously, since Sunday. There's screenshots and there's fellas doing stats on A4 pieces of paper and everything. But somebody did send me something about our scoring impact all this year from our half-forward line and our subs. And it's it's just been nowhere near um, good enough in terms of game changers. Game changers. And another concern for me would be our um, our midfield replacements. Like we brought Mike Breen on there on Sunday from Beaufort. Mike is naturally a half back, centre back. He was brought on midfield, mm. okay, for for legs, for legs, because we were lacking them coming down the last ten minutes. And Mike does have a good burst of pace, and he can get up and down the field. But that's a concern as well, you know, around the middle area there, the real engine room of the team. We don't seem to after Dermot and Jack. What do we have to come in there? Adrian Spillane can come in there sometimes, but he predominantly comes on or starts on the half forward line. So for me, I think the, the, the lack of of scoring power off the bench, having depth in those areas, Shane, is the concern. We seem to be okay defence-wise. We seem to have good cover there and and more to come, I would expect, from, from under 20 teams over the last few years. But it's up the other side of the field and in the middle of the pitch that I think people's concern is when they talk about depth and impact from from the bench. Um, so, in terms of midfield, right? Is there a delegation en route to Australia to ask Mark O'Connor to hasten his return? <laughs> like I'm not joking. It's the type yeah. of thing, you know. Uh, yeah. You would definitely be making the call, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's again. Talking about the postmortems, Ger, his name was mentioned. Yeah, his name was mentioned a couple of times. I'm sure, he's 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 natural, a natural guy to come in there. Um, look, for me, I I don't know what to answer your question. The guy is really really settled in in Geelong, isn't it? He's he's flying. He's what was he part of an all Irish? Was there a was there a picture of the, the all Irish half back line there the other day or something or half forward line himself too? He and and Mullins, so I can't see that man. But yeah, it's 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 something that if if there was even a chink of light in it, would you do it? Um, I'll go if they want me to. No problem. I can I can go. <laughs> or get, is, can, give, give, is, who's your reporter down there at the moment? Kathleen McNamee is. Yeah, we can get her to call in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, yeah, it's it's sure. Look, he's he's a ready-made midfielder, like you know, um, and and was was the best underage midfielder that we produced out of those minor teams and under 20 team or 21 teams before he took off down under so but look it's it's pie in the sky stuff at the moment Ger, because it's it's just he's obviously under contract and so on and so forth so it's just post-mortem talk at the moment yeah I'm afraid. yeah okay because it was strong rumour was that he was um, certainly close or interested in coming back and that could be tantalising for a number of years and it might never happen Stefan Cumber obviously has come back but has just been blighted by injury uh, but certainly I think he started his first game at cornerback and then his second game was midfield and then he got injured. So they're obviously looking at him as a potential midfielder down the line as well. So like, at least in the darkness that you're going through at the moment, there is some bright spark about like next year will be slightly different. There will be a bit more depth. 
oh yeah, Jaren, not just next year. This Kerry team are this Kerry team are here to stay. This Kerry team are going to be around. <laughs> Don't believe me. There's there's listen, we're down today. We're down and we're very down and we'll be down for a while and those players will. But this Kerry team are going nowhere. They're 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 a team absolutely full of fantastic players and they have a good management team and they will be back. They will learn and they've learned harsh lessons from Sunday and really, really tough lessons. But there's a good crop of players coming. They need development, as I said. Mix them in. I think Jack referred to always trying to find one or two guys and mix them into the current group. And yeah, you will lose players. I'm hoping we won't. But yeah, you could possibly. But no, no. Yeah, there's a bit of doom and gloom. But no, no, this Kerry team aren't going anywhere. They they lost out to a, a fantastic Dublin side who know who knew and had the experience to close out a really, really big game. Kerry just need to learn that and they will I'm sure they will Excuse my ignorance on this Sean you, you talk about the, the lack of scoring power off the bench I remember earlier in the year and after the, certainly the Armagh game in the league and Jack O'Connor was full of praise for for a couple of the so Donald Down O'Sullivan was one name that we mentioned of uh, you know an inside forward who was shooting the lights out in the club game played really well in, in a league, league game or two for Kerry uh, Dara Roach as well from, from Glen Flesk was another player that was kind of come to the fort like, is there a reason why these lads aren't I guess the consideration at this stage of the championship when, when, when as you say that's exactly what you need off the bench yeah look if, if, if I'm a Donald Downs and I'm a player who has uh, you know playing for Kerry and obviously in, in, in on his radar of course I'd be asking the hard questions of Jack maybe not this week but I'd sit down with him and say well look Gillian Spillane who obviously has that experience of playing in bigger games mm. for Kerry got on the other day ahead of me you know what, what, where, where's my role in this panel you know am I going to get time in the league yeah, I know he got a few games last year is he going to get a better run this time around Dara Roach was a different one he he got injured <clears throat> excuse me he he, um, he damaged his wrist and for whatever reason didn't get back in um, but he's back playing club football again I know he went to the States but he's back playing club football again so he's a guy that might um, pop his head up again at the start of the league next year. So definitely, like, you know, these guys have to ask questions of the management and, and that's what the management are there for, Shane. Um, you know, why, why didn't I get a, a chance here or a chance there? Certainly, um, it's questions they need to ask, but they, they are there as well, without a doubt, yeah. Um, will we see more of them in the league come 2024? You'd like to think so, but we'll have to wait and see. Can Kerry use this pain, Sean? Because you think when you, you when you lose a final to your great rivals, like Kerry lost to Tyrone in 05 and 08, but the following year went on to to win the All-Ireland. So is that something that you, you I guess, utilise in that winter of pain? Yeah, you have to. You have to, yeah. You have to. And like the thing is, look, you, you, you'll, you'll, obviously this week is going to be long now and they'll stick together. Um, and I hope they stick together. They will. They're a good bunch. Um but you'll be back in the club next week, you know, um, and you'll park Kerry for a good bit. You know, you will, you really will. It'll be there in the back of your mind, but you'll all of a sudden, you'll park it because you'll have your, you have your club championship coming up and then you have the county championship after that. And and before you know it, you're, you're, you're at Christmas time. And yes, that's then when the phone calls will start to vote. Okay, we're ready to go again. So, but of course you lose it. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, David in his speech in Killarney yesterday evening, was already mentioning next year now look is that something a captain has to stand up and say it's the public of course it is but deep down those lads will be will be you know ready to go again when 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 the time comes but for now this week they just need to try and forget about it enjoy themselves they've had a very very good year a very very good year um just couldn't get over the final hurdle and um, some outstanding individual performances all season you're prob- they're probably going to end up with five, six All-Stars, I would think. Possibly a player of the year as well. Um, so they didn't do, a, as I said at the start of the call, they didn't do a whole pile wrong all year. They didn't do a whole pile wrong on Sunday. It's just on Sunday, Dublin did a, li- a few things better that Kerry need to learn from and bounce back next year. Sean, we'll leave it there. Good stuff. Thanks a million. Thanks, lads. We're sorry for your trouble. <laughs>